everyone, and thank you for joining us today for this all important discussion with Beyond Celiac about their science plan and research for a cure by 2030. Celiac disease is a very serious genetic autoimmune disease that affects an estimated 3.2 million Americans. Currently, the only treatment is a strict gluten free diet. Today, we're talking to Alice Bast, CEO of Beyond Celiac, and the Beyond Celiac Chief Science and Strategy Officer, Dr. Salvo Aleshi, about the work they are doing to change the future for people with celiac disease. Alice, I'd like to start with you. Welcome. Can you talk about what the vision is for the future of celiac disease? Beyond Celiac is a research accelerator. We are driving research for treatments beyond the gluten-free diet toward a cure by 2030. Dr. Aleshi, as a physician and researcher, do you think it's possible to have treatments toward a cure by 2030? Uh, I believe actually it is possible uh, with the right uh, investment, the right focus and the right effort. Uh, by 2030, we should have uh, what, I, what I call true meaningful treatment options uh, for patients um, that replace or maybe initially go together with a gluten-free diet. Most people who have been diagnosed with celiac disease would say, well, I'm on a gluten-free diet and I've found that most of my symptoms have cleared up. I can live a normal life. But we've found recently that that's not entirely true. Why is it so important uh, not only to have a gluten-free diet, but also to find a cure for celiac disease? Uh, Diane, that's a great question. The gluten-free diet is just, unfortunately, it's just a Band-Aid. It's virtually impossible to avoid, avoid gluten. So from the minute we wake up in the morning to the time we go to bed, we have to be concerned about every bite of food that goes into our mouth. And it's a real burden. You know, we hear from the community that their kids are choosing colleges based on being fed and not based on the programs. Just think about somebody going to a birthday party or somebody when we can go out to dinner, be able to go out to dinner. It's really um, not an easy diet to follow. And it's also that misunderstanding of the fact that it's a serious autoimmune disease, right? You know, people start to think you're, you're fussy or you have, you know, that you're, you're, you know, you're on this diet to lose weight when really it's not a choice. You have to eat 100% strict gluten-free diet, no questions asked. That's not how we're perceived and that's that has to, to change. It's really important that our community can eat without fear. We also know that 30 to 50% of patients aren't totally healing on a gluten-free diet. They continue to experience symptoms. Their intestines tend to be inflamed. So we need to have more research into why that's happening, but also we need treatments beyond the gluten-free diet so that we can really just live our lives. It is a serious genetic autoimmune disease and we need to be taken seriously. Absolutely, and that is why we are here talking about a cure in just nine years. And Beyond Celiac has a four-point strategic plan to achieve this goal. Can you talk a little bit about what that entails? Yes, so the, uh, what we call our scientific strategy and plan that goes with it, it's really centered around four priorities. Evidence generation, translational research, clinical trials, and drug repositioning or drug repurposing. These priorities have to be seen as a whole and a way of getting us closer to the cure. So very often when we talk about them, we put them around a circle because we truly believe it's important to uh, advance each one of them and they are inter interconnected. So progress made uh, as we focus on one affect also the other priorities. And what do you mean by evidence generation specifically? Why is that so important? What we mean about evidence generation is try to assemble, collect and analyze the most robust set of data to really show the burden of the disease. And when I talk about the burden, I mean, of course, burden on patients, their families, but also burden on the healthcare system in terms of economic impact of the disease, which is quite substantial and often not visible. Uh, one area that we are particularly interested within this space is um, highlighting and again, collecting the most robust evidence on the non-gastrointestinal manifestation of the disease. 
celiac is often seen as a disease of the gut. But we know, for example, that the brain is an area that is often affected in, in patient through a constellation of symptoms that are almost unique uh, for the disease. You often hear about brain fog and so on. But there are a set of other comorbidities of other condition associated with celiac, which very often you don't hear about it. Dr. Aleshi, another priority for Beyond Celiac is translational research. Can you talk about what that means? A research that is really meant to bridge the gap between basic science, basic observation, and clinical applications. So we really want to invest into that type of research that within three to five years can lead a scientific discovery uh, to the clinic, either for being tested, for a new diagnostic, also for a treatment. And because we think that if we need to accelerate uh, development of treatment occurring in 10 years, we don't have too much time. I would just say is a is a bridge with fast lanes uh, on it. So uh, translational research is really the discipline that wants to accelerate. That's why it's called translation uh, of uh, very basic but important funding into application into the clinic. Now, for an organization like us that really wants, again, to, uh, you know, to be a cure accelerator and to, uh, you know, make sure that we have treatment within a decade, um, I think it's important that the investment that we put into research is made into this type of research, because that's the research that accelerate uh, discovery translation into the clinic. Um, so what we're looking to do is to bring the best and the brightest researchers from around the world um, and spark their interest in studying celiac disease, but studying celiac disease based on questions that our community wants answered. That will lead us to treatments and a cure for celiac disease. One thing I think is so important to talk about is the clinical trials that Beyond Celiac is involved in. Dr. Aleshi, can you elaborate on what is happening right now with some of these clinical trials? Clinical trials is really central to our ability to bring treatment to patients uh, soon. Um, and with our goal of getting them by 2030. There are some uh, different uh, pieces of good and bad news right now around clinical trial. One good uh, piece of news is that the number of clinical trials that are uh, going on as we speak in the space of celiac disease is unprecedented. So there are few, quite few opportunities for patients to engage into uh, these clinical trials. Uh, the challenge is um, you know, engaging patient and uh, make sure that there is enough understanding. Uh, Beyond Celiac has been playing a vital role We've been working with the pharmaceutical companies for many, many years to make sure that they are addressing what is most important to patients, right? So, Because without patient participation, we can't make progress. So we continuously work with the pharmaceutical company to be the voice of the patient, for them to understand what we value as the patient community. And then we work on the other side continuously to let our community know how important it is for them to consider participating in these clinical trials. We help them get connected. We help communicate back to them. And, you know, as I said, without patient participation, we can't make progress. And that's our role at Beyond Celiac. Drug repurposing, that is the fourth priority for Beyond Celiac. How does that work? And how will it help? Are there some drugs out there you found that can be effective in treating celiac disease? So what you do with drug repurposing is pretty much you take a drug that has already been tested into the clinic for a separate indication. And um, that drug has been proved, proven to be safe, but for some reason didn't work in that particular indication. And based on the science, based on the mechanism of action, there are good chances um, and that the drug may work in celiac disease. It's really increasing shots and goals. So it's a very interesting concept. Again, it has been used uh, quite a bit, but it has been used in rare disorders, it has been used in other immune disorders. Alice, I've followed your organization for years. In some ways, your name, Beyond Celiac, describes the change in field from one of coping to one of hope for a brighter future. And that's what we've been talking about today. How can people get involved and be a part of accelerating research for treatments towards that cure? 
Well, I hope you all become part of the plan because Beyond Celiac is changing the approach to celiac disease science. And it's only possible together with you, our community. Um, if you have celiac disease, we encourage you to participate in clinical trials, join our patient database. It's called Go Beyond Celiac. You can share your story there. You can, you know, you'll get some insights back. You'll be part of the community. And we hope that you'll consider supporting our scientific efforts financially as well. You know, all of the work that we're doing takes funding and your dollars can support research to accelerate treatments and a cure in which we can live our lives to the fullest and be able to eat without fear. So I thank both of you today for this important discussion and for joining us and everyone for watching. Thank you, Diana.